The US Air Force is preparing to deploy bombers to Norway for the first time. As per reports, B-1Bs, accompanied by more than 200 personnel, will be arriving in the country's Orland Main Air Station in the coming days. Initially, an advanced group will arrive, followed by the full team and the bombers themselves. The aircraft and airmen assigned to this bomber task force BTF, will all come from the 7th Bomb Wing at Dias Air Force Base in Texas. Air Force General Jeff Harrigan, commander of US Air Forces in Europe and Africa, said in a statement, Operational readiness and our ability to support allies and partners and respond with speed are critical to combined success. We value the enduring partnership we have with Norway and look forward to future opportunities to bolster our collective defense. It's interesting to note that US Air Forces Europe USAFE, routinely hosts a variety of US aircraft, including BTF deployments, but they've been operated out of RAF Fairford in England, which has been used as the dedicated bomber forward operating base in Europe. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how the US is bringing Arctic warfare near Russia's border with the imminent deployment of B-1B supersonic heavy bombers in Norway. Let's get into the details. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. The Arctic is getting increasingly important. As the ice caps melt in the Arctic, it will become economically viable to navigate. Russia is gearing up to monetize the potentially lucrative Northern Sea Route NSR, as the Barents Sea and the Arctic thaw faster than anticipated. In August 2017, the first ship traversed the Northern Sea Route without the use of icebreakers. The Dutch Bureau of Economic Policy Analysis projected in 2015 that the Northern Sea Route may be ice-free by 2030. A 2016 report by the Copenhagen Business School found that large-scale trans-Arctic shipping may become economically viable by 2040. The Northern Sea Route could make connectivity between Europe and Asia 40% faster, cheaper, more fuel-efficient, and greener. Russia will lose land as the ice melts, but it may gain nearly 1.2 million square kilometers in its continental shelf which means it will have rights to extract undersea minerals and energy resources. So it's not surprising that the Arctic and the adjacent regions will be in the focus of different stakeholders. B-1 Lancer essentially has two variants. B-1A was originally designed during the 1970s as a high-altitude, Mach 2.0 capable nuclear bomber. However, President Jimmy Carter canceled the program on June 30, 1977, in favor of air launched cruise missiles carried on board the B 52, intercontinental ballistic missiles, and what eventually became the Northrop Grumman B 2 Spirit stealth bomber. This was done after it became apparent that penetrating Soviet airspace at high altitudes in a conventional, non stealthy aircraft was likely a suicidal endeavor. President Ronald Reagan eventually revived the Lancer program on October 2, 1981. However, the new B-1B was optimized for low-level penetration. Additionally, the aircraft was modified with new engine air intakes and other upgrades to reduce its radar cross-section. The resultant B-1B aircraft no longer possessed Mach 2 capability topping out at roughly Mach 
but had much better survivability because of the stealthier profile. The B-1B is powered by four General Electric F101 GE102 after-burning turbofan engines. Each of these can generate 17,390 pound force or 77.4 kilonewtons thrust when operating normally and 30,780 pound force or 196.9 kilonewtons with afterburner. These enable B-1B to have an excellent range of 5,900 miles or 9,400 kilometers and a service ceiling of 60,000 feet. The engine performance makes B-1B capable of hauling a lot of weapons. B-1B has a massive payload of 125,000 pounds, that's 56,700 kilograms, internal and external ordnance combined. It has eight external hardpoints for 50,000 pounds or 23,000 kilograms of ordnance and three internal bomb bays for 75,000 pounds or 34,000 kilograms of ordnance. Depending on mission, B-1B can carry a variety of ammunitions like Mark 84 general purpose bombs, CBU 87 and 89 and CBU 97 cluster bomb units, GBU 38 JDAM, AGM 158 joint air to surface standoff missile JASSM to name a few. B-1B has long-range conventional weapons for attacking land and naval targets. The AGM-158 JASSM or Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile is a low-observable standoff air-launched cruise missile developed by Lockheed Martin for the United States Armed Forces. It is a large, stealthy, long-range weapon with a 1,000-pound or 454-kilogram armor-piercing warhead and it went into service in 2009. JASSM has a range of about 230 miles or 370 kilometers. Viewers may note that it was used in combat when two B-1B bombers launched 19 of the stealth missiles at a Syrian research center in Barza. Lockheed Martin worked on the missile further and AGM-158C is developed, which is an anti-ship variant and is named LRASM by the U.S. Navy. The missile uses inertial and jam-resistant GPS navigation system for the initial phase of the journey. A two-way data link is present for mid-course guidance and a radio frequency and infrared sensor is activated in the terminal phase. The warhead is potent enough to cripple a large warship. Initially, Russian President Putin had dismissed climate change, but he's moved away from that line and signed the Paris Accord on climate change. Mr. Putin is now trying to use it as an advantage. Russia established a new Northern Fleet Joint Strategic Command in 2014 and is building up its military presence in the region at a rapid pace to protect its interests. It now has seven bases along the shipping route the latest being Northern Clover on Katelny Island deep inside the Arctic. Russian military aircraft are now more frequently operating from forward located airfields. If a conflict breaks out in the Arctic, U.S. air power could be a decisive factor. Particularly B-1B's standoff weapons JASSM and LRASM would come in handy to hold Russian assets at risk. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.